Hello everybody, what is up? It is Cyborg Elf here with another video. And today I'm going to be going over pattern scanning. This is also called AOB scanning, array of byte scanning, uh, group of byte scanning. It's called a lot of things, but in essence all it does is it looks through the module and it scans for certain bytes. Now the reason this is useful, if you're used to a game like CSGO, it updates a lot and all the addresses and offsets they get shuffled around and you have to go update them. You're probably familiar with Haze Dumper. Haze Dumper actually does pattern scan. So if you actually look in this config file right here, we can see that there is patterns as well as offsets and extras. I'll go over that too. So Haze Dumper is right here. I will have the link in the description because this is just something I'm going to be referencing. But this information does work with practically any game, and it's probably easier with some other games because you don't have to deal with modules like engine.dll, client underscore panorama.dll. Um, that's just the architecture the way CSGO is built. Another thing we're going to be using is Cheat Engine, so you can come here and download it. Just be aware of that pesky adware they try to sneak in there during the installation process. But let's actually go in here and we can hop in a game. This video is going to be more focused on the coding aspect of this. I will still go over Cheat Engine and kind of show you just to get a good understanding for all of you. But there's a lot of other YouTubers. Uh, one of them is Steven Chapman. He has really like advanced Cheat Engine videos that can help you learn uh, pattern scanning, uh, as long as as well as some other um, very useful skills with Cheat Engine. And this is going to be coded in C++. If you were not already knowing that, this is a language that we use a lot. So I'm going to attach it to the process of CSGO. It's asking me to load a associated cheat table. This is just because I already have um, a previous save. But I'll click no on that. So on Haze Dumper, if I run this, you can actually see how it's pattern scans. It did it really fast, but it, it finds all the stuff, gets the addresses. And this is what we're going to be doing in our own code. So let's actually open up this config again. And let's find something that we're going to be using. So let's do DW local player. I will go over what extra and offset is. And it's going to be something that we use in our code. But we can copy this right here. And we can scan the memory with cheat engine. So we'll click right here, array of bytes. And make sure it's hex. And set this to make sure it's gray where it doesn't really prefer any of the other options. It'll scan, it usually does fine too, and we have it right here. So this right here is the array of bytes of our local player. We still do actually though need to add our extra in offsets, and I'll show you how to do that in the code, it's not too complicated. All right, so I normally do go through the code and code it line by line, but first off, this is pretty long. Well, it's not too long, it's 133 lines. But I feel like it'd be better just to post the code on GitHub. There'll be a link in the description. So you can look at that yourselves. And I'm going to explain each section of the code to you. But before we do hop into that, I would like to shout out, uh, first off, Sally, a member of the Discord, who helped me out with this. And he also grabbed some components and uh, coding aspects from this GitHub post right here. So first off, obviously we start off with our preprocessor directives. We have IO stream for um, text, console output, that type of stuff. Windows API, we use this a lot for the read process memory, write process memory. And then T1 help 32, we use this for the git module. We actually have two of these uh, because we want to save them as two different types. And right here, I got this from Haze Dumper. This is just kind of a identifier for the uh, default FOV and then you've probably seen these before this is a template for RPM read process memory and write process memory it's really nice how we use it so all we have to do is pass in uh, the stuff that we want to uh, read and then it'll put everything into this put the process handle, the address, the buffer and then the size which is the same as this and then the same thing kind of goes for the write process memory, except we're going to pass in a value of what we want to write it to. These are just templates that help simplify our life, because we do use 
the read process memory and write process memory function a lot, especially when modifying games. So you've definitely seen this or some variant of this before. This is a git module function. So this is going to say that says module entry 32. So this kind of implements the stuff in the T1 help 32 directive. And then the same thing goes for this. I couldn't overload it because it took the same parameters. So I just named it git module underscore base. And what this does, same as this, it takes in the module name and process ID, but instead this returns it as a uint pointer underscore t. So right here, this is the function that is probably most important. It's really complicated. And I say that not even in a stretch, but I'll try to explain this all. We have this, the meat of it's right here where it loops through and it essentially scans for matching bytes. So say you have like this, like 8, 8D, eight yeah, that's a D. It'll look for that. So here we have this. You've probably seen this before. We have our window. So we use the find window A function. This first parameter is going to be null because all we need to pass in for this is going to be the, the window name. So the window name is Counter Strike Global Offensive. Now we have D word and we're going to call this proc ID and we're going to assign this a value by using the get window thread process ID. We'll pass in this value right here, the window that we just got, and that's how we'll get the process ID. And then finally, we're going to open a handle up to communicate between our application and the CSGO application. So this is probably like, this is like a communication tunnel where we can have access to read and write. Uh, this is essentially the same thing as doing vm underscore all access. And we get this access or we explain what process we want to access by passing in the PID proc ID. Uh, right here I have this module entry 32 client because we declared this up here but we'll define this later. So this part's optional, just kind of ignore that for now. I'll explain this declaration later. But now we're in the main SIG scanning part. So first we get the DLL module, so we'll call this client, and this is going to be client.dll. If you remember from the first part, we could actually see through Haze Dumper what client it was a part of. Most games are actually different than CSGO from my experience, where you just reference, you know, like ac underscore client, yeah, client.exe, like that. So next we make a byte, so like an array, and we make this the size of the client itself. So that's, that's where we're going to store all the bytes. And we'll also have one for bytes read. So right here we're going to read the process. So we put in the process handle right here, which we already got. So this is, we're telling it like what we're going to read through what handle. And then again, we have what we're reading. And we're going to save this as bytes underscore red. Now here's a little check. It's checking that the size of bytes red is equal to the size of bytes in module. Okay, so now that we have this kind of declaration and defining out of the way, we can get into the main part of it. I get both the local player and the entity list. We don't use the entity list in the example down here, but I just decided to include it for some extra reference. So it's auto local player. This is the same thing as doing you in corner. It just self kind of defines what it should be. So we're going to use the find pattern function that we made earlier. And you can actually look at the parameters it takes, the module, array, pattern, and then we have offset and extra. If you do remember, I said this was important. So right here we pass in the client the bytes, and then we have right here our array of bytes. So this is what it's going to be looking for. So then first we add the offsets and then we add the extra. Now if you've already noticed, I'll explain this after we get through any list, it's the same thing for any list essentially, you just put in the different information. But it'll get that value and it's going to add it all. But notice right here we have local player minus the module base address because we've already done the reading and adding module base address to the address. So if you're used to doing adding in the read process memory the 
module base then this you don't need to do that anymore as you can see right here because normally right here on line 106 you do like client plus but we don't need to do that because it's already been included so that's the thing I want to explain and this is where the optional part comes in if you're really old with the ways I guess and you don't wanna you don't wanna have to deal with updating your code even though it wouldn't be that much work you can actually subtract it and just save it like that so then you could end up doing like client plus but there's no need because we've already included it ourselves so that's why this along with the declaration up here is optional and now you've seen this before in my FOB changer video we simply get the FOB and then whenever the F7 key is plus we pressed sorry we decrease the FOB and then when the F8 key is pressed we increase it and then F9 we reset it back to 90 so let's actually run this we'll hit this right here local windows debugger we want this to be x86 also because that is the architecture of CSGO and I'll say it again the source code will be in the description alright so right here we have found DW local player at this and you can cross reference this with haze dumper if you want to just verify your results before you actually get into coding uh, like the example I did that's what I did so then I'll press space oh and it's not working now and this is because I didn't switch this because I remember I put it'd be client plus that but we're not going to do that we're just going to do local player since the modules already included in local player and now hopefully it works so we have this and this yep and I believe it's like that because I already yeah I already modified my FOV earlier so we're increasing it we're decreasing it it looks really wacky but let's run around here and we can kill some CT anyways thank you for watching I do hope you enjoyed the video and let me know if you like it more when I just don't code it line by line but rather go back and explain each line in more detail I feel like it's easier to go over the code that way and it's more timely because that's something I try to do with my videos I try to make them as informative as I can in the least amount of time anyways peace out